हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल एडु एथिक्स सो इफ यू आर न्यू टू दिस चैनल हाय माय नेम इज शीजा माथुर एंड आई विल बी वेरी ग्रेटफुल इफ यू टेक अ मोमेंट एंड सब्सक्राइब टू माय चैनल बिलो सो आफ्टर अ लॉन्ग टाइम वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद आवर इंग्लिश टॉपिक आवर इंग्लिश चैप्टर फॉर क्लास सिक्स क्लास सिक्स चैप्टर थ्री दी ड्रैगन रॉक एंड in this video we are just going to read the chapter we are not going to go to the chapter we are just going to read the chapter and in next video we are going to go to the chapter means i will explain you the chapter in the next video and then we will do some question and answers of this chapter the dragon rock so uh after a long time we are going to start the dragon rock i mean the in i mean the english chapter after a long time we are we are going to do we are going to start so let's read the chapter the people in a valley believe that a large rock that looks like a sleeping dragon will help them in times of trouble trouble what happens when the valley has a very hot and dry summer so is just a uh, you know introduction that they are saying that the people that are living in this valley believed that a sleeping dragon that is made of a large rock will help them in types uh, in times of trouble and we will see that what happens in the valley when valley has a very hot and dry summer right Now this story begins with once upon a time because the best stories too of course so once upon a time and imagine if you can a steep valley cluttered with giant spiky green pine trees and thick green grass wild flowers spread their sweet hairy perfume along the gentle breeze and bees hum musically to themselves as they cheerily collect flower pollen people are very happy here and they work hard keeping their houses spick and span and their children's faces are clean this particular summer has been very hot and dry making the lean farm dogs sleepy and still farmers whistled lazily to themselves and would stand and stare into the distance trying to remember what is what it was that they were supposed to be doing by 2 o'clock in the afternoon the wa- the village would be in a haze of slumber means feeling very sleepy and not thinking clearly with grandmas nodding off over their knitting and farmers snoozing in its haystacks It was very very hot no matter how hot the day however the children would always play in the gentle rolling meadows with wide brimmed hats they chittered and chattered like sparrows as they flew as they frolicked in their favorite spot Now their favorite spot is very important to this story because in this particular spot is a large long scaly rock that looks amazingly similar to a sleeping dragon the children knew it was a dragon the the grown ups knew it was a dragon the dr- the dogs and cats and birds knew it was a dragon but nobody was scared because it never ever moved the boys and girls would clamber all over it poking sticks and it had and it and hanging wet boots on its ears 
but didn't mind in the least. The men would sometimes chop firewood on its zigzag trail because it was just the right height, and the ladies' weaving group often spun sheep fleece on its spikes. Often on a cool night, when the stars twinkled brightly in a well-weighed sky, and the children were peacefully asleep, the grown-ups would settle for the evening with a mug of steaming coca in a soft, cushioned armchair. Then the stories about how the dragon got there began, nobody knew for for sure. There were many dif- uh, different versions depending on which family told the tale. But the one thing that everybody agreed on was this. In times of trouble, the dragon will wake and free the village by making a lake. This little poem was etched into everybody's minds. The days went by slowly, quietly, the most importantly, without any rain. There had been no rain in the valley for a long for as long as the children could remember the wells were starting to bring up muddy brown water and clothes had to be washed in yesterday's dishwasher dishwater. The lawns had faded to a to a crisp biscuit colour and the flowers drooped their beautiful heads. Even the trees seemed to hang their branches like weary arms. The valley turned browner and drier and thirstier. Every hot baking day, the village folk grew worried and would murmur to each other when passing with much, with much shaking of heads and Toots. They would look upwards, searching for rain clouds in the clear blue sky, but none, but none ever came. But none ever came. It was now too hot for the children to play out in the direct sun, and they would gather under the shade of the trees, digging holes in the dust and snapping brit- brittle twigs. The dragon will help us soon, said one child. He must do something, agreed another. I'm sure he will. They all nodded in agreement. A week went by with no change. The people struggling along as best as they could. Some were getting cross at at the dragon and would cast angry sideways looks at it when passing. The villagers are becoming shiny and sullen. Meanwhile, the children had a plan quickly and quietly. They moved invisibly around the village, picking and plucking the fading the fading flowers with out with outstretched arms and pockets up to their chins. They rustled over to where the giant rock lay as still as ever the boys and girls placed brand bunches of flowers up around the dragon in a big circle. They scattered petals around its head and over its nose. They danced around and around it, skipping and chanting the rhyme that they all knew knew so well. In times of trouble, the dragon will wake and free the village by making a lake. The searing that made them dizzy and fuzzy and finally they all fell in a spalling heap at the bottom of the mound. They looked up at the rock. Nothing happened. A dry wind lazily picked up some flower heads and swirled them around. 
The air was thick with the pollen and perfume. A stony grey nostril twitched. I saw something, cried the youngest boy. They stared intently. An ear swiveled like a periscope. The crown began to rumble. Look out! Run! Run! The children scampered in all directions, shrieking and squealing, arms pumping with excitement. The rumbling grew and grew. The dragon raised its sleepy head. It got onto its front feet and sat like a dog. It stood up and stretched, arching its long scaly back. Like a sleek tabby cat, it blinked and looked around with a big, kind, long lashed eyes, and then its nostrils twitched and quieted again. The older folk, the older folk, were alp- alerted by the screams and shrieks. The ladies. Help held up their long skirts to run and the men rolled up their sleeves and soon the whole village stood together in a tight huddle at the foot of the hill. Start staring up at the large beast with mouth with mouths held open. Ah ah the noise erupted from the dragon. Ah, ah, the families gripped each other tighter and shut their eyes. Ah, choo, the sneeze blasted from the dragon like a rocket, throwing it back 50 pieces, causing a whirlwind of dust and dirt. Ah, choo. The second blast lit open the dry earth. Sending explosive explosions of soil and tree roots high into the sky and something else too. The people heard the sound but couldn't recognize it at first for it at had been such a long time since their ears had heard such tink, uh, tinkling melody as their eyes widened in in the wonder. Their, smi- their smiles turned into grins and then yahoos and hoorays. Water could water cold clear. Spring water oozed then trick. Trickled then rode along the valley flow. The torrent snogged over a farmer's haystack, but he didn't care. The river the river carried away the school teacher's bike shade, but she cared not a jot. Ladies howled with the laughter and men hooted and whistled and threw and threw their caps up in the air. What used to be a dirty brown dust bowl now gleamed and glistened in the sunlight, sending playful waves and ripples across the lake and inviting all to share. Hmm, signed the dragon, sleeping, showing his perfect teeth, seeing as I am awake. And he lumbered forward with su- surprising grace and style and disappeared into the cook dark water with a small wave of a claw and a flick of his tail. They never saw him again after the families had restored and rebuilt the village. They erected a bandstand and a mound and a Monument in the spot where the dragon used to lie. Every year to mark the occasion, they would bring garlands 
of flowers and herbs and arrange them in a big circle. The children would have the day off for Water Dragon Day. Wearing the dragon masks and they had been working on all weeks. They would skip and clap and sing. The dragon held us as we said he would do. Hooray for the dragon. Acho, acho, acho. And that is the end of the story by Elena Ashley. Thank you.